Hello everyone. Today uh, we will discuss about heterojunction laces or double heterojunction laces, also known as DH laces. So you may be familiar with homojunction laces. There is nothing but a PN junction. It is made up of uh, direct band gap semiconductor material, and there will be an active region that is at the interface there will be recombinations then the photon generation then there will be amplification and stimulated emission of lasers almost all semiconductor lasers available nowadays there is a double heterostructures in a double heterostructure a thin layer of suitable semiconductor is it is sandwiched between two layers of higher band gap materials and uh, forming two heterojunctions. So, you know, the wide band gap semiconductor is commonly used is algas, aluminum gallium arsenide. So, gallium arsenide is a narrow band gap semiconductor. So, look at the fig uh, figure. There are two heterojunctions in device and hence it is called a double hetero structure. Then uh, the middle material has a lower band gap, and so uh, there will be a higher refractive index. The materials on the two sides, that is algas, it will have a lower refractive index because it it will have a higher band gap. So the refractive index will be on the lower side for algas. So this is like a optical uh, waveguide, optical fibers. So due to this uh, uh, change in the refractive index, there will be total reflections, total internal reflections at the interface. Here also there will be total internal reflections. So a typical double heterojunction consists of a thin layer of uh, gallium arsenate sandwiched between two layers of P and N doped algas. So there will be a barrier, a barrier difference, potential barriers at the two heterojunctions. It restrict the flow of electrons from here. It will restrict the flow of electrons from N algas to the P type algas. So this results in a large concentration of uh, accumulated carriers in the gas layer in the thin gas layer. So here the gas layer will act as active region because all the uh, electrons will be trapped in this gas. You know the gas gallium acinate is a direct band gap semiconductor. So this confinement is called the carrier confinement at the gas layer. So it leads to a large number of electron hole combinations or uh, recombinations and uh, there will be emission of photons in this active region. Now we can check the basic structure of DH laces. So it consists of a thin and narrow layer. There is a gallium acinate layer. That is a, a direct band gap material at the center, and the thickness will be around uh, 0.1 nanometer. And this uh, thin layer is sandwiched between P algas and N algas, and the band gap of gallium arsenate is around 1.43 electron volt. At the same time, algas we know that. It is a wide band gap semiconductor. The band gap will be just above 1.43 electron volt. And uh, this band gap is uh, directly proportional to the presence of aluminium in algas. When the uh, presence of aluminium increases, the band gap also increases. Anyway, in the active region, there will be recombination of electrons and holes. Due to this, there will be photon emission because gallium arsenate 
is a direct band gap semiconductor. So during this recombination, there will be a photon emission. And the energy of photon emitted uh, here will be around 1.43 electron volt because uh, it is directly proportional to the band gap energy of gas. And these photons will not be absorbed by aluminum gallium arsenide. Please note it because uh, aluminum gallium arsenide is wide band gap semiconductor. It will act as a barrier here. So instead of absorption, there will be reflections. And uh, the emitted photons is reflected back and forth between the cleaved, that is polished ends. And there will be stimulated emission and amplifications. Then it leads to the laser emission. And uh, one point is that uh, the cleaved uh, surface has about 30% uh, reflectivity. So there is one problem in double heterostructural lasers. There is, there is spreading of light in the entire width of the laser. That is at the active region. We are not controlling the direction of light. There will be spreading. It is not pointed perfectly. It is not pointed one. Then in order to avoid this problem, we can go for gated lasers. That is gain gated lasers. Here the current injection to the laser is restricted to a narrow strip. And this is realized by coating or placing an insulating layer on the uppermost semiconductor layer. That is just beneath the top contact. Uh, normally, uh, we will use silicon dioxide as the masking layer or as an insulating layer. Then, uh, hence, the current flows through a narrow portion into the active region. Just check the figure. This is the basic structure of uh, gated laces, gain gated laces. At the top and bottom, there will be metal contacts, ohmic contacts. Then uh, the active region is gallium arsenide. Here it is P type gallium arsenide. Then uh, at the top of uh, gallium arsenide, there will be the wide band gap semiconductor, that is algas. Here it is P type algas. And the bottom side, there will be N type algas. So there will be a P L gas, then just below the P L gas there will be a narrow band gap, gallium arsenate, that is the active region. Then below the active region there will be another barrier that is aluminum gallium arsenate. Then we cannot directly connect the battery terminal to the wide band gap or semiconductors because due to the uh, resistivity factor. So, on the top of PL gas, we will place a narrow band gap semiconductor that is gallium arsenate. On the bottom side also, just beneath N type L gas, there will be gallium arsenate. Okay. Then, in order to avoid the spreading, we need to provide one narrow channel. So, here it is constructed uh, with the help of an oxide layer, masking layer. So just beneath the top contact there will be an oxide layer. So there will be narrow channel. Through that channel we can insert or we can inject the current. Based on the current there will be a lacing action. 